time in hip hop culture, we're taking a look at where things stand now. There are so many opportunities on the one hand and a terrible potential for self-destruction on the other. Let me try to spit it to you logically. You got Kevin's heart, but no state property. Hip hop legend Big Daddy Kane's latest song, Slap, with Busta Rhymes and Conway the Machine, earned more than three million views in its first two weeks of release. It's a reminder of Big Daddy Kane's enduring popularity and the lyrical skills that placed him among hip hop's greatest MCs. Big Daddy Kane first burst across hip hop stages in the mid 1980s as a member of the famous Juice Crew. He says hip-hop culture today is so big and diverse, there's room enough for everyone. It's just a matter of acceptance. You have to accept it all instead of saying, this is real hip-hop and this is fake, or this is trash hip-hop and this is good hip-hop. Let everybody live, do what they do, um, because there's an audience for it all. The fatal shooting of Takeoff, one of three members of the hip-hop supergroup Migos, crushed their millions of fans and forced many to face the loss of yet another beloved artist whose music is a soundtrack of their lives. Takeoff's death in Houston followed the murders of PMB Rock and in recent years Young Dolph, Pop Smoke and Nipsey Hussle, all lives lost to gun violence. We keep hearing the question, why can't we have the music without the murders? Hip-hop journalist and artist Rob Markman says hip-hop mirrors the streets, but fans play a big role. We're at a crossroads, and I think it's gone too far one way. And, and we've always seen the pendulum come back because I think the people need it. Um, I, you know, I think back to after Big and Pac died, we got back to some party music. Hip-hop's subgenre of drill music is wildly popular online and with the youngest fans. Some of its content was so violent and provocative, authorities and relatives of murdered drill artists denounced it. But it is part of hip-hop and should be allowed to grow and diversify, says multi-platinum music producer Amadeus. I want to be clear on, on behalf of all of us. Like, we don't hate where music is. We feel like there's a lot of great music that's out right now. A lot of really dope artists that's doing anything, even with the even with the drill. One of the founding fathers of hip hop says, "Let them be." I would love to see a lot more positive message messages being showcased in music. Um, I would love to see a lot more of that. But as far as you know, the younger generation that's into the, to, to the drill music, the trap music, or whatever, it's like if if that's their thing, man, let them have it, let them eat. Let them live, let them be successful. There's so much to talk about with this. Let's get to it with our panel. Joining us on Street Soldiers for the first time, the one and only Big Daddy Kane, hip hop legend and superstar. His latest song and video out now is called Slap. He's currently on tour, taking a couple of minutes away from rehearsals to uh, be with us and talk with us about this. Big Daddy Kane, great to have you with us on Street Soldiers. Glad to be a part of this, Lisa. Thank you so much. Also with us is Rob Markman. He's a hip hop journalist and artist. Rob, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me again. Lisa. You got me up here with Kane and Amadeus. I'm in the right place. Thank you. Lisa. Exactly. Exactly. Um, also with us is Amadeus, multi-platinum music producer. He's worked with uh, many of the biggest names in the music industry, from J-Lo to Diddy to many songs, hit songs with Chris Brown. Amadeus, thank you so much for being with us. Lisa, is always a blessing when you call in. I didn't know I was going to be on here with such lessons, Rob, and Big Daddy came, man. This is epic, so I'm humbled and grateful, always. I almost texted you, but I wanted to surprise you because I, be, I knew you'd be thrilled. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Kane, I want to start with you on this. When you see the hip-hop crowds today with the, the state of the music that you're making and where the, the culture as a whole, because you're an integral part of the development and growth and expansion of the culture, where do you see everything at right now? Um, I see music, you know, being a whole lot different than I'm used to hearing it. But I think that um, growth and change is good and important. You know, so when I see a younger generation taking it into a different direction, I think that that's a beautiful thing. You know, um, they're creating a sound, a style that works for them, something that they can gravitate to. And I think that that's beautiful. Um, I, I would love to see a lot more positive message messages being showcased in music. Um, I would love to see a lot more of that. But as far as, you know, the younger generation that's into the, to, to the drill music, the trap music or whatever, it's like if, if that's their thing, man, let them have it, let them eat, 
let them live, let them be successful. I think it's beautiful. You know, um, I just think that there are there's enough room for everybody to do whatever they want to do. If someone wants boom bap, if someone wants a uh, uh, more poppy type of hip hop or whatever the case may be, there's enough room for everything. You know, it's just that, you know, you have to uh, accept it all. It's just a matter of acceptance. You have to accept it all instead of saying this is real hip hop and this is fake or this is trash hip hop and this is good hip hop. Let everybody live, do what they do. Um, because there's an audience for it all. And how do you find your audiences these days as you're on tour now with the new music? Um, well, you know, there are there are the people that I grew up with that's still, you know, a strong fan base. And then there are younger cats that, you know, that's into um boom bap and some of the um uh boom bap and skateboard type, you know, hip hop of the younger generation that um, have fathers or uncles that's, that's like, you know, hey, you ever heard of Big Daddy Kane? They play it for them and, you know, they, you know, start studying history and get into me. So that's that's really where it be. So it's lots of times, you know, I may be in front of an um, audience, you know, in the Coliseum, you know, with a bunch of 40, 50-year-old hip-hop fans that grew up off of me. And sometimes I'm playing festivals with a bunch of young white kids that just heard, just learned about me, you know, so it, it differs. So the benefit, the benefits of streaming, Rob. When you look around on um, music, you've very been very entrenched in the culture for your whole adult life. When you when you look at where the culture is right now, where do you see it it, it being at? Um, you know, I, I definitely think we're in a, a new era, something way different than when I came up in. You know, I, I got my education listening to Big Daddy Kane about how he was supposed to carry on. You know, I, what I would like to see, and I agree with everything that Kane said, like this generation needs their own sound. You know, you never want the generation before you to trash you. I remember coming up, you know, the older folks used to tell us, well, why y'all sample so much? That's not y'all music. That's the Osleys. That's James Brown. Like, and, and discredited hip hop as real musicians. So it's always the generation before kind of looking down. So I think this generation with the drill music, with the trap sound, with whatever's in vogue, needs their own sound to define them. What I would like to see them do, um, definitely more positive messages, definitely more balance, but definitely with a mind about how we're going to carry this thing on in the, in, in the future. Because, you know, seeing the Big Daddy Kanes, the Rakims do their thing and then embrace and make a lane for a Nas, you know, make a lane for a Jay-Z, make a lane for a Biggie Smalls, you know, not only were they great, you know, in the 80s and the finest, they made other people, Kane, you made other people great. Um, and I think that's what I would like to see from this generation is when y'all put y'all thing down too, open it up. Let's make other people great. Let's make sure that there's a future of this hip hop thing, because once we if we start stop selling and the sales start slipping and the streams start going down, these corporations don't really care. These regular they'll make us disposable. And, and our culture is not a disposable culture. No, definitely not. Amadeus, you work with a lot of different artists and also different different genres of subgenres within hip hop music as well. Where where do you see the culture at right now? I love what Kane said. I love what Rob said. You know, for me, I can speak from a lens of a musician and a producer. Um, you know, being in the business for over twenty years. Obviously, my first placements was a Foxy Brown and you know, a uh, dip set and G Unit, right? And then it transitions to like you know Mike Jones and a Paul Wall to so like working with all these various artists. So sounds, uh, styles, trends, it, it all changes, right? And I think uh, I love what Kane said in regards to adapting and embracing all of the different sounds. When you think about when I was growing up and my mom and dad was playing, you know, Kane and 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 Otis Redding and, and the Bee Gees, right? My music that I was listening to wasn't the music that they were listening to. So we, we kind of both frowned upon each other in regards to what everyone liked. Right. And then I had I had Kane, I had Wu Tang, I had Biggie, I had Jay-Z, right? And then you fast forward now you got Lil Wayne and you got Rick Ross and you got Jeezy. Now we got Lil Uzi verse. So it's like it's always gonna change, it's always gonna transition. And one thing that I have to learn, uh, like Kane said, is embrace it. Uh, and as a producer, I don't wanna disappear because I because of the fact that I've been in the game for 20 years, I wanna evolve. I wanna tap into the drill. I wanna challenge myself and tap into the trap and, and get the inspiration from the younger kings and queens, right? Instead of hating on it, I'm like, show me the way. We'll be right back. Big Daddy Kane, when we talk about the essence of hip hop, what does hip hop really stand for? What does the culture, what makes it hip hop and what makes it not? I would love to hear what you think about that. I think that, you know, um, 
hip hop basically is a cult is a culture and that's the thing that um makes it bigger than music because you know we're also talking about the way you dress we're talking about the way um you um uh the way you write um it's 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 like you know, it's a way of life you know the way you talk you know there's there's hip hop slang um there's a a, a a graph way of of writing you know the way there's hip hop attire that a lot of people wear you know rather it's um action wear or that smooth stuff you know and i mean that goes way back you know to the to the to, to the origins, you know, with the cats rocking the British walkers and playboys, you know, um, the alpaca sweaters and mock necks, you know. So, I mean, it, you know, whether it's the swag, you know, the swag way or the b-boy way, you know, with the Pumas, Adidas, you know, it's, 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 it's all of that, you know, and I think it all plays a part. And then, you know, when you look at the elements such as emceeing, uh, DJing and breaking, you know, when you when you add those to the mix as well, I mean, it's it's it's. It's it's a it's a full thing, you know, as opposed to you know just someone, um, you know, uh, just singing with a band. It's, it's 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 a whole different vibe, you know. And I think that you know it's it's a cultural thing, you know. And do you are you when you as you look as you look around and see what's happening now, are you surprised by how widespread it's become, how international it's become, or do you feel like okay, this is this is just the way the growth is supposed to be taking place? Well, see, it's like a, a lot of things that people don't understand. Um, like um, you have like true hip hop um, uh, artists that, you know, they're, they're like, you know, OK, that's not a real MC because someone's writing their rhymes. You know, um, that's not a real MC because he's quoting someone else's rhymes. You know, we're back in the days, you know, that was considered a sucker MC or a biting MC. Right. But, you know, what a lot of people got to understand is that it's not like back in the days right now hip hop is a corporate thing you know people are actually recording records recording songs you know people are recording songs so therefore it's the type of thing where you know a lot of artists became MCs to be the dopest MC in their neighborhood to be the dopest MC in their borough or, or whatever you know right now people are becoming rappers to be successful they're becoming rappers to have a hit song like that's their goal, their objective. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you know, they have a whole different mentality. And with the understanding of that mentality, you know, um, you can have this argument about who's the greatest singer of all time. Whether you pick Marvin Gaye or you pick Luther Vandroff, they both had writers. You see what I'm saying? Right. You can't blame a new artist for having someone writing their rhymes because they're not trying to be a dope MC. They're trying to be a big pop star. You know, right. with me, that's all. I just wanted to be the dopest MC. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, my man, you know, Biz discovered me and was like, I'm going to get you a record deal. But my objective was really just to be the dopest MC. You know? And that's so. what you wanted to do. Rob, speak to that authenticity, because that authenticity is still really important with a lot of the hip hop fans. Yeah, you know, I think the essence of hip hop is, is, is it's an art form, like Kane said, um, that expresses itself through music, through fashion, through lyrics, through DJing. So it's definitely an art form, but it's also rooted, in, I think, in truth and community. Um, you know, and I, I would like to see hip hop get back to its communal essence as as well. Obviously, there's competition, there's beef, there's things that happen, but you know, it's rooted in the community. Um, and I think a lot of those changes that Kane was talking about is when the corporate structure comes in, when the business of hip hop gets big and starts to influence it more. I I, I just would like to see the influence come from the streets, come from the community. Um, you know, because this is us telling our, our stories, you know, the famous Chuck D quote, you know, hip hop is, is, you know, black CNN, like, like sometimes, sometimes this is the only platform we have to tell our stories unfiltered the way that we need to tell them. And, and guess what? The rest of the world might understand, but it's a Morse code. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that we pick up on and, 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 and stuff like that. So, you, you know, I think it's really, really important, um, Everything that Kane said, it has to change, it has to evolve, but it has to stay rooted in community, I think, in order for, for us to thrive and for order for the culture to move forward and grow even bigger. Amadeus, a lot of it is about bringing attention to conditions, to a culture, to people that were, for years, decades, marginalized, or stories were never told. But do you think that's what's happening now? Um, I don't, it's, it's kind of a mixture of everything, right? Um, because I think that's what inspired me to hear Kane's story, to hear Rob's story, to hear Jay's story, even though 
I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up in the hood. I grew up in the projects. Once the knife Washington Avenue, I was, I was covered. I was sheltered by my parents, right? Couldn't go outside at a certain time. Had to be in at a certain time, right? So I was able to understand the stories they were telling because I lived in that type of environment, right? So when you fast forward to today and today's youth, like they're telling it from their lens now. So now I'm a little older, um, so I'm not going to see it how they see it. I'm not going to visualize it how they, how they are. So now they're telling their stories through their lens. Now, I'm not mad at that. I respect it because I feel like music and hip hop, regardless of the genre, it's all creativity and it's all you, it's all your perspective, right? And I feel like there's no right or wrong to that because it's your experiencing that your experiences that you're sharing with the world. But I just feel like I, we need more. I think the way, you know, Kane, you know, spit and the way he spoke his lyrics and recited his songs and Rob, there's a lot of creativity to it. Like they're telling their story, but they're, they're adding creativity to it. They're adding colors to it. They're not just telling the story just dry and straight cut. It's making it entertainable. You know what I mean? It's like entertainment. It's, it's real, but it's entertaining at the same time. And I would just love to hear more creativity, not so much with the beats or, or what they're doing, but just how they're saying it. Everybody kind of right now is saying it the same way. Everybody's flow, not everybody, but a lot of the artists' flow is the same way. Like, and I would always say, you you can know the difference between Kane and Jay and Nas and Big. Everybody had their own vibe, their own delivery, their own tone, their own cadence, where you, you could uh, distinguish who was who. You think there's still a lot of creativity and originality? Or do you think that's something that people have become so obsessed with making hits that it's like, okay, that sound is hot right now. Let me do that. Or let me try that. I met, um, one of the Migos. Um, but you know, this takeoff thing really hurt me a whole lot for the simple fact that, you know, I felt that the Migos was such a unique group. I thought that they were like a Southern version of the funky four, the way they do that in and out stuff, you know, with with, you know, with one just throwing in the fill in notes, you know, while the other one is rhyming. They it, it kind of reminded me of what the Funky Four used to do back in the days, and I thought that you know that they had a you know they have you know a very unique style, and then you know I've I've said this um on numerous occasions that you know everybody from 1977 up until 2013 were basically students of Melly Mel even though they changed they flow up a little bit or whatever it was still basic the same um blueprint that Melly Mel wrote in 77 you know for me wow. you know Jay-Z um Eminem Ludacris you know it's still the same i don't think that that blueprint really changed until the migos you know you know with all that deal. No, 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 no. you know it's like they i think that you know they created something new and innovative um for um southern hip hop you know, so I mean, there is uniqueness, but to add on to what Amadeus was saying, I think that one of the things that's missing is that lyrical skill, that lyrical content in a lot of um the big records. You know, you hear it, you know, from, you know, J. Cole, um, Kendrick, you know, Rhapsody, several others, you know, but I mean, with a lot of the big major stars, I think that the lyrical content is something that's missing. And I think that without that, it's really hard to have longevity and stay power because it's like, if you put a song out and it's relying on the beat, like say, for example, I put a new song out, Amadeus produce it, right? A fan goes to someone else and say, yo, you heard that new Kane joint? It's crazy. Amadeus did the beat. I just blew, I mean, they, you know, they just blew Amadeus up. Right. I'm not even relevant on my own song. See what I'm saying? And that's where, where we are, where people say that, you know, um, you know, Mustard did the beat, such as, you know, stuff like that. You know, so in a situation where someone, you heard that new Kane song? Yo, this dude said, I ain't at the ATM to check luggage. My bags carry on. Now you focused on, you know what I'm saying? Me. <laughs> and that's creating that stay power where people want to quote what I'm saying. They want to listen to what I'm saying. They're focused on me and not just the track. You know what I'm saying? And no disrespect, because you know, you, you're amazing. I'm just trying to say- No, that's real. It. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on hip hop culture at a crossroads. You can share it and watch it again on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind, it's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.